Hey, Sake. What's going on? Hello, Dan. Um, so you're going to tell me. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> you're going to tell me uh, your side of the story of uh, purchasing the rug. We've heard Elliot's side. Now it's your turn. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Um, or how I'd say, like, I want to kind of illuminate um, something and maybe a kind of an error in uh, my brother's thinking or I suppose a comprehension about what it is that I was actually doing, you know, like what, 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 it, what, what I was actually, like what does it mean to really purchase something? Um, essentially, like, wh what is it that I'm really buying? What, what am I spending my money on? Um, and so anyway, basically, uh, I went to buy a rug. Um, and I needed the rug to be 250 centimeters by 250 centimeters, okay. which is a square rug. And um, when I looked online, uh, most rugs are rectangular. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's very odd to have a even-sided rug, mm -hmm. and uh, I wasn't sure if it was even possible to acquire a rug of you know this uh, with these proportions, which fits perfectly in my room. And uh, it's also very just a big deal for me to, to kind of decide to make this kind of big purchase because I tend to be very austere in a way and not really have anything. I uh, mostly sit on the floor, everything on the floor. So this rug was a very big deal to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, also buying it in person, all this stuff. Um, so basically I, I go to this store and it wasn't the store that I intended to go to. I was on the way to a particular Oriental rug store and I wanted an Oriental style rug. But on the way, I took like a, a strange turn and came across another store. And I was like, oh, mm -hmm. I'll pop in here. Mm -hmm. And I thought I could check out, you know, both stores and then do the kind of compare prices, compare whatever, blah, 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 that whole mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. And I walked in there. And um, first, there was a younger man who talked to me. And then his father came out from uh, the back, essentially. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were asking me what I wanted. And I told them I wanted a rug 250 centimeters by 250 centimeters. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they were like, well, that's very odd. And I told them, uh, yeah, it kind of is. And uh, they asked like, what else would I want it to? And I said, well, I would like it to be thick. And, and uh, they asked me, you know, uh, like what, what color would you want it to be? And I pointed to a particular rug that they had hung up there, which was kind of a light green. I said something like that. And the older man thought for a moment and said, you know, we have just the rug downstairs. We can go and show it to you. And, um, and another thing about these men is that they, they looked very interesting. That like, I couldn't tell like where they were from, you know? All right. Like I was like, are they, could, they, like they seemed very just kind of like homo sapien in, in a strange way. Like, like I couldn't like pinpoint their race. I was like, are they, you know, like Armenian or Azerbaijani or something? It was something like, 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 like I don't know, it was fascinating. Like just these, these characters. And then they bring me down to the basement and like, it, it was really amazing what was down there. I mean, it was <clears throat> like just stacked with these rugs, just, like it was kind of like um like a roll doll book or something you know they're all just rolled up and, and just tacked on top of each other and then these these two you know funny looking gentlemen they they they, they pull out this rug and and they unfurl about a third of it and i'm looking at it and uh they're like do you do you want us to show the rest of it and i said uh no need you know like 
I see it. I mean, like, <laughs> you know, what's gonna happen? I don't. Like, I'm like, I'm gonna make these guys again. <laughs> the whole thing. It's like, it looks beautiful. It's a beautiful, and I couldn't. Even, I couldn't. You know, I couldn't have imagined it to look so beautiful. Really, it, it was something. It was very simple. It was very simple and pure. And um, oh, and they had asked me before, like, how much was I willing to spend? And I said, you know, like, no more than eight hundred. Um, because I really wanted a nice rug, like a really wait nice a second, eight hundred what? Eight hundred euros. Euros, okay. Yeah. Um. And uh, so a- anyway, they they said that they would you know sell it to me for five hundred. And I want to make this clear that I'm very aware of the fact that when a salesperson gives you a price you're not supposed to take the first offer. <laughs> you know, that that's the first rule of sales and that they know that. And so they will tell you a price which is too high because they know that you're supposed to ask for a lower price to get down. And so there's this thing with, you know, that we're modern men. And so that first price is supposed to be unreasonable to us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But to me, it was a perfectly reasonable price. It was 250 centimeters by 250 centimeters coming out to 500 euros. I mean, like just in my mind, the kind of the, the geometry of it all, you know, it, it just fits so perfect. And the fact that I walked in the store with this very strange request and it wasn't even the store I intended to go to and I met these very fine gentlemen and they gave me exactly what I wanted. It just felt you know, right. Like, it, it just felt right. And then like, it just like, it was like, everything's going so perfectly. Like, why would I want to introduce this kind of savage, brutal, you know, can I just say this? Can I say one thing? Yeah. When Elliot said the story to me in the other video, I was thinking what you're saying right now I was thinking, like, I was trying to imagine why you didn't try to push the price down. And I was thinking probably it was that situation where Sake felt like everything was just perfect as it was. And he yeah. didn't want to like really introduce any, like <laughs> any weird <laughs> element to that situation. That's what I was thinking. I really was. And yeah. like, I like there's like another element to this too, where it's like a part of me was also thinking like, man, like if I had a girlfriend right, and I was living with her and we were going together to buy some rug, right? Or a wife or, or a part, you know what I mean? And, and it, like this whole thing would be a nightmare. But here I, I'm alone, I'm doing this for me. And, and, and then also it's like, I really want this rug, you know? And, and these guys have provided such a lovely service. Mm-hmm. Like, it's weird that like, like, are we only supposed to be generous to homeless people? Like, can't we also be generous? Like, shouldn't we reward, you know, it, it just, and it's the numbers in my head, the 250, 250, 500. It's just like, this, this, I mean, that's how much it's worth to me. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and then every time I go and I come home and I see the rug, I know I paid 500 euros for it. And, and also I I remember the experience of buying the rug, you see, and it's a lovely memory in my head. Like I'm also buying the memory of it. Like it's a, you know, this, like, like I'm buying happiness, you know, and like, if I were to try to finagle down, right? Mm-hmm. It's kind of like I'm only in my head uh, growing this disdain for spending money. And like I'm prioritizing saving money, but in my head, I'm also then making spending money painful. So in mm-hmm. the future, that, that, that element is always gonna be there. Mm-hmm. And so how can I ever really enjoy money if I can't value, you know, what a beautiful thing it is to spend money. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But also like Elliot's story tells you something about maybe like he's lived like in New York and New Yorkers are all about 
finagling, as you said. So it's like for him, and maybe for Sam too, I don't know. It's just like, it's second nature to finagle. It's just part of like what you do. You just do it. It's not even like a conscious decision to push the price down. It's like, they don't even think, oh, that price is too high. I want to push it down. It's just like, oh, he said that price. So of course I'm not going to accept that price. I'm, just, I'm going to try to push it down. It's just what you do. But for you, you're coming, I think you're coming at it from a different perspective, just from a different way of thinking. And everything you just said makes total sense to me. Like, I think maybe I'm a little closer to you. Like, and I would get the same criticism from them. Like, hey, Daryl, you didn't even like try to talk to this guy. I think they would probably give me the same. <laughs> but it's like, I didn't go there to get a deal. I went there to get a rug. You know, I 